Welcome to your UA Light Celestial Insight. Welcome to the channel. So March is considered this month of emotional processing and not just renewal and rebirth for so many reasons. Although it is a month of dynamic renewal and rebirth, okay, for so many reasons. Not only is March the anticipated month where we celebrate the astrological new year, Aries season, and the spring equinox, which falls in the new moon in Aries this year, but March 2023 features a lot of astro activity in Aries, in addition to many power planets changing signs after years and months of being in the same sign. There's Mars, which has been in Gemini for seven, seven months, changing signs, and the power outer planets Saturn and Pluto finally change signs, which are the most talked about powerful transits ushering in dynamic changes, defining the next 20 years for the world, okay? And so for a full astrology breakdown, including psychic oracle insight, on how Saturn and Pluto are expected to bring changes in the world and in your personal lives, right? Um, you know, like higher lessons, spiritual advice on the sort of tests that these planetary changes will bring for you according to your zodiac sign. Check out the new video posted on this channel and linked below. But if you don't know, Saturn is the planet of karmic rewards for your efforts, for better or worse, and it forces you to be accountable, to mature, and to gain mastery, and it will do so by placing challenges and to find limitations in the areas of your life related to whatever sign and house it is in, right? So that you are forced to learn spiritual and practical lessons for growth. And it has been in Aquarius for the last three years and finally moves into Pisces on March 7th. But because Saturn was in Capricorn prior to Aquarius since 2017 and is the ruler of both, Saturn uh, being the ruler of both Capricorn and Aquarius, right? While Pluto has been in Capricorn, which is also ruled by Saturn, right, since 2008, we have actually been in a Saturnian age of rulership for the last 15 years, okay? So truly, if things have felt tough for you in a particular area of your life for the for the last 10 to 15 years, right? You're not crazy. <laughs> and it is exactly because of this heavy Saturnian age influence. And it's been really hard for cardinal immutable signs in particular, right? And, you know, this energy has brought societal karmas to the surface, right? In a way that we can't ignore anymore. So, Pluto finally enters Aquarius on March 23rd, just two days after the astrological new year and spring equinox new moon in Aries, which it will form a sextile with, right? So this is a powerful new moon. And then two days after that, on March 25th, Mars finally exits out of Gemini after being in the sign for seven months, right? Since August 2022. So those tidbits alone just give you a taste of why Mar March's uh, astrology is hyped, is anticipated, and considered dynamic, right? Because it's going to bring some climaxes, some closures, and just some energetic shifts for some cycles to end and begin, right? And it'll launch us into some renewal, growth, innovation, and big changes in the world that really sets a trajectory, right, for this new year and beyond. So take a moment, give this video a like, and subscribe to the channel. Cozy in as we get into some UA light celestial insight from the stars, right? And the cards related to the collective astrology predictions, and then your individual horoscope and psychic tarot insight, right? On challenges, um, what you don't see coming, and spiritual advice for March 2023. So the energetic theme of March really is about us being at this crossroads, right? And where, you know, we're going to experience illumination, crossroads, climaxes, and ultimately some karmic closures 
hopefully, right? Um, and we can think of March as both this month of emotional release and sobering reflection surrounding these important questions of how did you get here, right? And what happened to certain hopes and dreams and, you know, these also these moments of excitement surrounding where you will go from here and where you can go from here with all that you know now from the last 15 years of change, challenges, limitations, and hardships in your personal life, but also the world. The world has changed so much in relationship to these transits, right? And so it won't be a sort of neat linear process and just March being, oh, just a great month and da 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 da. You know, it's like, yeah. But, you know, many of you are already experiencing, you know, this sort of roller coaster of emotions and these sort of triggering experiences, you know, being at these crossroads. And it's a part of this collective energetic process, you know, of release and reflection and then some renewal and rebirth. And that will extend, you know, into April throughout Aries season, okay? And so this mix of experiences and emotions, you know, being a bit of a roller coaster is punctuated by transits at the beginning of the month, for example, where we begin March still in Pisces season, right, with Mercury entering Pisces as well on March 7th, where it's going to make a conjunction with Saturn in this critical degree of exiting Aquarius and entering into Pisces, right? And this is going to be that energy, you know, of like some emotional, but also some sober analysis and reflection about the past and, you know, your future. And on this very same day, you know, this 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 sort of uh, dualistic energy, right? It's also punctuated by the fact that on this same day, Venus in Aries makes a conjunction with Jupiter in Aries at 12 degrees, while Jupiter is in this sort of two degree looming conjunction with Chiron, you know, and Chiron is the wounded karmic healer, right? And so this is happening and sort of setting the energy these first two weeks of March, right? Until that uh, conjunction between Jupiter and Chiron becomes exact on March 12th, right? And so this puts this emphasis, right, on potentially being emotionally triggered and having to transmute these like painful emotions and experiences and, you know, trying to see and accept and hold on to the higher wisdom that these experiences in the past and the present have brought you, right? And so from the beginning, March 2nd, through the full moon on the 7th, and through the end of the full moon weekend, which ends with that Jupiter and Chiron conjunction on the 12th, we have Venus and Mercury's conjunctions with Jupiter and with Saturn and the full moon illuminations, which connects with Uranus and Mars, sort of gifting you news and insight or an experience that is perhaps surprising, emotional, and sobering in a sort of spectrum of lighthearted or devastating ways, right? But to ultimately bring you closure of some sort, right? So that you accept the truth of something and um, be emotionally and spiritually liberated to strategize how to move forward, right? It, and it, this could happen in a number of ways. It could be um, a conflict an apology or reconciliation attempt that you never thought you'd get from a parent, a family member, or an old twin flame, right? Um, situations with a boss, and even an opportunity to, you know, consider your personal boundaries, your personal ethics, and your desires, right? And really be empowered in enforcing your boundaries and moving towards your desires in the future. It could be news about a mentorship or a partnership that has lucrative long-term benefits 
or it could be news of a conflict, right, related to boundaries being crossed and issues with ethical values and beliefs in relationships, right? This is energy that it could even bring you like a surprise marriage proposal, right? It could be even a financial gift or a financial proposition. It could also be news about an opportunity to learn and travel. This Jupiter and Aries transit is so duly connected to uh, learning and traveling in higher education, right? And so with these placements, March 3rd, 3-3, Right, is also an, an auspicious day to take action and initiate an opportunity for yourself by being optimistic, looking your best, and having an important meeting or shooting your shot, and generally taking some important step toward some larger dream and, and steering your destiny. It's a good day for lighting a seven-day prayer candle and being in ritual to release old energy and to ground and welcome in new energy, right? For the next seven days, from March 3rd through March 10th, three days before and after the full moon on March 7th. And, you know, a time to really connect with your guides, the great mother who presides over the grace of Saturn. We are all about the divine feminine and the great mother here and for connecting with your higher self. So during that time, definitely spend time visualizing, downloading, and speaking what you truly desire for your life, especially because with the full moon astrology, we have the sun in Pisces making a harmonious connection with Uranus and Taurus while it's also illuminating the moon in Virgo, right? Making the full moon uh, sort of sextile with Uranus, right? And with that in the mix, it really suggests high spiritual, psychic, and creative energy um, and surprises, right? But the thing is, is that it squares Mars suggesting you know possible conflict and even a uh, fire-based natural disasters um literally in terms of what this degree um is associated with right so take note of your own surroundings and the news around the full moon time related to fire-based natural disasters and um any sort of fire-based emergencies um so for more information on the full moon astrology and how it will be affecting your sign, take a look at the video posted on the channel for more details on how to really work with the energy of this Virgo full moon this week. Okay, so this energy of illumination, crossroads, climaxes, and karmic closures initiated at the beginning of the month will really continue and build through mid-March between the 11th and the 17th with a number of emotional roller coaster transits, right, including that Jupiter Chiron conjunction until we reach the energetic shift and the rebirth, right, of the new year and the new moon in Aries and the spring equinox, March 19th and onward through the last two weeks of the month, okay? But let's discuss that week, that tricky week of March 11th through the 18th, okay? So we have the um, 11th being a day where there is a sextile between Venus and Aries and Mars and Gemini, and then Mercury and Pisces making a sextile with Uranus and Taurus, okay? And um, this is a Saturday that's actually really good for initiating important conversations, um, coming to agreements and resolves, possibly in your favor with any conflicts, from having increased confidence and resolve about what it is that you actually desire um, as a sort of result or um, resolve with some sort of situation. It could be, you know, um, you doing spiritual, creative, and psychic energy work, 
um, it's definitely a good weekend for energy healing where people may be receiving um, energetic upgrades right in their um, physical emotional and spiritual bodies okay and then you know this then the next day is that Jupiter conjunct Chiron right and that is that sort of dynamic energy and um, but to be quite honest, this Jupiter conjunct Chiron energy could bring so many different things. It could bring, you know, some sort of um, trajectory defining news or experience, right? Um, it could be some sort of breakthrough, truly, in a number of ways. And um, definitely look at that Jupiter and Aries video to see um, more about this, okay? But it's also giving, you know, long lost twin flame, reaching out to you, all kind of things could be happening with that, all right? And then from the 13th through the 17th, we have a little bit of a doozy here with the Sun and the Mercury. Sun, not the Mercury. Sun and Mercury <laughs> and Neptune all making a conjunction with each other in the sign of Pisces and then all squaring Mars and Gemini okay and um, then we have Venus in Aries um, squaring Pluto and sextiling Saturn right and Venus is also moving into Taurus in the midst of this too right so this is definitely climactic and uh, frustrating energy, right? And any conflicts that are sort of looming, things sort of reaching a, uh, a boiling point, a point of illumination and being at a crossroads and potential climax, right? This could be stalemates and conflicts being gaslit or emotionally manipulated by people like co-workers, friends, siblings, partners in love and or work, even teachers and classmates, right? Um, given that this is Mars and Gemini. So this could definitely be, you know, these encounters with, you know, people refusing to be accountable and honest about their deception or passive aggression. Um, and, you know, being in situations where you really have to seek to maintain emotional mastery and where people you know on on all sides might be uh, you know not trying to compromise their beliefs in some matters where they feel that there is some distrust in the midst and there's tensions around you know values and you know these matters may or may not be involving assets and property ownership and you know um People just trying to argue their case about what they believe they deserve, right? And it just really can be emotionally triggering and confusing. Um, and, you know, where you may be confused about what best actions to take. And that just ble bleeding over into all areas of your life. Feeling confused in your daily routines. What to do in these interactions. And even questioning your goals and your direction in life. And... You know, it's just emotional meltdown energy. And, you know, these experiences could interfere with other more creative and uplifting ways you desire to use your time, energy, and attention. You know, especially because, again, it's this mix of opportunity, um, you know, in addition to just emotional turmoil. And so the advice with these uh transits right during the middle of the middle of march is you know mercury is going to be squaring mars but it's also going to be sextiling pluto and then venus is going to be squaring pluto but it's going to be sextiling saturn right and so karma is really involved here and cosmic order and you know there is a sort of advice here to take your time and responses if you can you know respond to things after or around you know the new moon and really stick to facts and be calmly assertive if you must engage stand your ground and resolve something um there's a higher chance of being more empowered emotionally stable um and supported in steering your outcomes um later right and then um also, 
wait, disengage, and also don't take bait, you know, um, being baited into any sort of emotionally manipulative circumstances. And, you know, with people who you just no, are just not going to be honest and take accountability, right? If you can, if there is some situation where you can, go around, talk to higher-ups, talk to senior managers, right? Because it's, it's really this tricky energy um, where it's like, either you're going to wait, either you're going to be able to handle things with emotional calm, or you're going to disengage, or you're going to want to burn it all down, okay? <laughs> so... You know, that's that's really the mix, right? So um, when Venus enters into Taurus, you know, we'll begin to feel a bit more grounded. Um, there'll be more of a focus on pleasure, self-care, beauty, comfort, and, you know, thinking about your financial security and stability. With Venus entering into Taurus and um, there being that square with Pluto and sextile with Saturn, this could mean a number of things. Um, someone could be trying to earn your love or your business um, by showing you how they've changed, matured, or what they have to offer. And this could just be energy of resolving some financial, legal, and even tax disputes and making some sort of financial decisions in the interest of your long-term best interests, right? This could be dealing with banks. This could be dealing with, you know, just institutions. This could be um, having business negotiations, right? And in general, this sort of configuration there is definitely giving something related to fintech, digital banking, digital currencies, cybersecurity with digital banking. Um, I'm thinking that this could even be a time where we hear something on the FTC decision on non-competes, right? Um, definitely check out that Saturn and Pluto video um, regarding some of the predictions that I had related to the astrology and how that's going to manifest in politics and governmental things, right? And in general, related to that, um, this astrology could mean a number of things in terms of global and political events. And I just want to touch on really quickly. The Mercury and Venus conjunctions at the beginning of the month, and um, then all of this energy that then transpires the remaining of the month, it could illuminate... Um, you know, a lot of news about national leaders, like some sort of breaking news, right, about a national leader. Um, this could be a time where there is more aid that is able to reach earthquake victims. Um, there could be more national news coverage and discussion about um, consensus being reached um, and acknowledgement about the chemical and gas leak origins of COVID. Um, that's kind of in the air as a sort of controversy. And then there's also controversies of Korea's nuclear bomb testing drills with the U.S. That could uh, get more attention in the news. And uh, especially given that the full moon is emphasizing something related to fire um, and maybe um, natural disasters, just something, something with fire, right? And, and uh, certain things in the news just gaining a lot of traction and attention, right, with these Mercury and a Jupiter conjunctions and the Venus and Jupiter conjunction, Jupiter and Chiron, and all of these things, right? So there could also even be anger and outrage in current legal battles and the pending decisions around student loan forgiveness in the U.S. and just more continued issues related to education in the news in general. And this is courtesy of, you know, the square with Mars and Gemini that is being highlighted in those um, configurations. All right. So now let's get to the last two weeks of March. Okay. So we have Mercury um, and the sun entering into Pisces on the 19th through the 20th. And then that new moon in the spring equinox at the critical zero degrees, right? Happening on the 21st. And, you know, this is a major new moon because of the critical degree 
because it's also in a sort of loose conjunction with Mercury and Neptune, and also sextiling Pluto in that critical degree as it's entering Aquarius, right? And so um, it's really that energy that brings in all the newness. Um, it's a powerful new moon for manifestation, confident action, right? And so stay tuned for an upcoming video where we'll discuss more about the new moon astrology and how to best work with the energies and um, any particular predictions for the signs, right? And so in the meantime, take a look at the video that goes into more detail about the Pluto and Aquarius transit, right? How that's going to be powerfully changing things since that new moon is going to be aspecting Pluto and Aquarius, okay? And then on the 25th, just two days after Pluto entering Aquarius, we got Mars finally changing signs, entering Cancer after being in Gemini for seven months. And this is a welcome energetic change, but Mars does not like being in Cancer, okay? And Mars in Cancer is also a recipe for emotionally manipulative energy. Um, and passive aggressive behavior. But the thing is, is that there can perhaps be more emotional tolerance in your dealings with people, right? And you being able to sort of channel your um, emotions um, to reach outcomes and results that you desire, right? In your communication. And then um, between the 26th and the 28th, we have Mercury um, in Aries um, becoming visible and then also making a conjunction with Jupiter. And this means that it is such a great time for starting new things, launching new things. It's great for marketing. This could be a time where you're receiving great news, clarity, right, on your directions with long-term goals and plans even. You could be receiving information related to visas or spotting new opportunities related to international travel or relocation, or even study or work abroad opportunities, right? And um, I mentioned in my Jupiter and Aries video that this could be a particular conjunction where there are perhaps some announcements with more countries instituting nomad visas. Um, and then this energy is good for submitting applications and pitches and receiving news on applications and pitches and generally a great time to put your best foot forward and make long-term plans but also to you know be confident and enterprising but also realistic in your plans and to understand that there could be unforeseen circumstances that arise um, that you may not be able to plan for immediately right so don't overcommit don't overpromise um, do what you can with what you can with what you know <laughs> but this mercury and aries conjunction with jupiter is happening as jupiter is also becoming invisible right so again there could be unforeseen news and circumstances right and then we end the month with mars and cancer trining saturn and pisces and venus and taurus conjuncting uranus okay so this is um the Mars and Cancer trine with Saturn and Pisces in particular is really about being able to channel and express your emotions and ideas to reach people in an effective way and to really kind of attract outcomes and long-term results that you desire in your work and love relationships and in your career, right? And um, it's just, it's good for emotional stability and emotional determination and resolve with something, right? Cancer is a cardinal water sign, right? And Saturn and Pisces is a sort of stabilizing influence, right? For thinking about how to make your dreams a reality, okay? And then with the Venus and Taurus conjunction with Uranus, this is surprises, right? This could be surprises in finances and relationships. So it's definitely good for making sure that you're aware of your budget um and um this is also energy where you can meet new people um where you could get new ideas about something creative right um and that you could do business-wise uh related to fashion beauty 
the beauty industry, um, even music, um, something creative, right? And so, you know, Uranus is all about um, innovation and um, getting ideas, right? And then one of the things I forgot to mention is that, you know, both of these, Mars and Cancer trying Saturn and Pisces with Venus and Taurus conjunct Uranus, it's like this could even be like break up and make up energy, right? And then being stronger in the long run from learning some kind of lesson, right? So it'll be really interesting to just keep a watch on kind of what transpires for you synchronistically along this time. We're going to get more things moving into Taurus. Um, so definitely... Uh, Take note of anything related to finances and relationship that begins to kind of sprout, you know, in your life around this time. And so, so to wrap up this collective reading, um, I received some channeled angel number messages um, as some spiritual advice, right? And the numbers that I got were 1133, which breaks down to eight, um, and the number 511, right? And eight in particular and 511 are really sort of emphasizing that March and also what these transits are really saying is that it's a month of renewed karma, that your actions have the potential to renew your karma, right? In a number of ways, it could end karmic cycles, um, but it could also even extend certain karmas, right? Depending on your actions. And so um, that's also what Saturn and Pluto are really all about, okay? So it is just being really emphasized here. So I'm gonna read the um, sort of spiritual understanding of the angel number 511. And a five is a number that is all about making positive life choices and important changes and about personal freedom. And it's about having to be adaptable and resourceful and to stay motivated to make progress. And similarly, the angel number one and master number 11 are also, you know, these numbers that all there are all about portals of newness and beginnings, um, inspiration, and, you know, um, manifesting, right? It's about spiritual awakening and development and about us connecting to our higher selves and our divine life purpose and soul mission. And so 511 is this message from the angels, from the divine, about the auspicious changes and new beginnings in your life. These changes have come about through your intentions and actions to better your life and incorporate a more spiritual approach. This is also a directive to incorporate a more spiritual approach, I'm getting, right, as you deal with any of these um, circumstances that surface during this time of karmic closure, right? And so the angels encourage you to make changes per your soul's promptings and intuitive urgings. 511 suggests that some karmic life changes are ahead and occurring in your life right now. And so your angels angels want you to remain courageous and positive throughout these transitions they support and surround you with love and healing and this number appears when it's a message that your intentions are manifesting rapidly right and that is absolutely related to um pluto being an aquarius and Saturn being in Pisces, right? So therefore keep your thoughts and focus positive and optimistic, maintain a positive attitude about the changes happening in your life. And it says old and negative habits, patterns and beliefs are being replaced with new, more positive ones. And this attracts and manifests further positive energies and opportunities for you. Go with the flow. Okay, so that is the sort of spiritual advice for the collective. And we're going to now get into your personal horoscopes and tarot psychic spiritual advice for the month. Dear Taurus, so I will preface this by saying that I am feeling and seeing in the cards, in the astrology, in my third eye, everything that I am quite clearly tapping into, like 
two different sets of Taurus collectives, like people on different sets <laughs> or different sort of like levels of growth, different relationships to um, certain goals, how they see goals, what they think of success, um, what they consider success to be, right? And what I can say is that, you know, just from a purely astrological level, um, what has really sort of been showing up in the astrology for the Taurus Collective is that, you know, you all have been, you know, experimenting with, you know, your self-expression and ways of continuing to transform your career opportunities and grow your career opportunities. And, you know, with all of the planets that were in Pisces, that was very much in your 11th house. That's all about networking, all about social networks, right? And it was very much about, you know, continuing to secretly, but also publicly expand your networks, you know, your market reach, the connections that you're making with different industry moguls, right? And ways that support your visionary goals, related to media, writing, publishing, teaching, and higher learning, art, entertainment, wellness, and, you know, growing your finances. And many of you have been seeing rewards from these efforts just in major ways, okay? You've been trusting your instincts and taking risks. And, you know, the planets are asking you to continue your efforts to transform, stabilize, and make practical plans related to networking with, you know, powerful people outside your usual circles, outside your usual sort of schools of thought, and with financial advisors, um, teachers, people in general that help with your professional development, your professional development, <laughs> financial literacy and money management, and even with manufacturers, right, to help with any product or project development in the interest of, you know, your growing public reputation and success. And it's like, you've been continuing to think of how to creatively utilize media, marketing, travel, and, you know, partnerships to help your goals and continue building your reputation as a serious professional as you try new things. And um, it's been about maintaining and building, you know, momentum and towards some big ultimate goal or vision, right, that you kind of have for yourself, right? And that for many of you, you're keeping to yourself. And with um, more of the planets moving into Aries. This is all about your 12th house now, right? While Mars is moving out of your money house, which is all about, you know, making money moves and moving into your third house, which is more of a focus on like your daily routines and your relationship with people in your immediate surroundings, um, your daily business, your relationship to writing and all of these things. It's like, there's this sort of shift now even in terms of the astrology, but, but specifically in terms of like the psychic, the clear, the really clear, <laughs> telling you like really clear sort of gavel that spirit was like pounding here with me around these questions for you this month, right? And it's like, um, that's more about slowing down, focusing inward and getting connected, right, to yourself, and because you've been having a lot of outward focus activity, right? And it's like, so there's this question, right? That spirit kind of has for you this month. And, and this is where, again, I am getting that I am tapping into different collectives of Tauruses, okay? You beloved bulls. And so spirit has this question for you that is, what is your why? What is your why? And there's this like sort of divine instruction for you to carefully consider your why and your core intention for the connections and partnerships in love and career that you desire so much, that you are seeking to gain and or that you maintain. What is your why? And you know, there's this question of do any of these choices, like do any of these choices come from a sense of insecurity, 
fear, lack, inauthenticity, running from something versus making a confident choice to stand for something or embody something and attract something. Because these core intentions are sending a powerful message to the universe, right? And are actually very clear to the public, regardless of any efforts to disguise your intentions. And again, it's complex and it varies. I'm seeing this play out for different tiers of the Beloved Bull Collective, okay? For many of you who are spiritual and have received some revelations about relationships core wounds and have healed and tapped into a higher mission of some sort, the strategic actions that you're taking to enforce and maintain your boundaries and build and protect something sacred, they are divinely protected and disguised, right? And for others, I'm seeing some beloved bulls on another aisle, right? Attempting to reach a particular goal very clearly from a place of lack and um, insecurity, right? Where all of the experimenting, you know, sort of borders on desperation, confusion, sort of throwing everything out to see what sticks, um, networking that borders on clout chasing and just trying to build wealth and self-worth off of the strength of associations versus pure authentic talent and confident soul embodiment. And there's, there's just something here fundamentally about efforts in your career or trade and um, efforts to put distance between you and some people and the reputational damage of some associations, some tensions and conflicts, or even to like protect yourself in some way to protect your interiority, your personal life, your mental health and your wellness in some way. And it's like for many of you who are spiritual and have received some revelations with relationships and core wounds, it's like, again, you have healed and tapped into a higher mission of some sort and you pulling away and separating yourself from certain relationships and groups and places because of considerations of what they, you know, say about you. Like it, 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 it's different, right? There is this question that is still looming that is about, um, have, you know, Do, do, (laughs) you know, it's like, there's this question of like, you know, pulling away, separating yourself from certain relationships, groups, places, because of what they, what your associations, your partnerships and your social media activity could say about you, right? And this question of, do they reflect your values or do they simply satisfy some ego gratification, you know, from a cosign or, or a persona you're putting forth, right? some your sense of self-worth right or to simply like aid your bottom line where it's like for others these actions to separate from some and associate with others are linked to a subconscious action of running toward some superficial somethings and attempts to run from something and you know it's like you will know who you are where you fall in this i'm not the judge or jury this is just what is being, what is clearly coming through here. This is a season where it's like, there, like Saturn is entering into Pisces in your, um, what is this? Your your eleventh house, right? And so Saturn is about karma. Saturn is about sitting your ass down and being like, hey, let's limit this. Let's think deeply about this. Let's think clearly about this. Let's think maturely about this. And Pisces is all about, you know, regardless of if it's in your 11th house or not, it is still associated with Neptune and Jupiter and um, about thinking about the deeper, deeper meanings and intentions, the subconscious the unconscious aspects of things, right? And how they are influencing you, right? How you have to face the dark and the light of things, right? And so, um, 
you know, your relationship to certain networks with your 11th house being ruled by Pisces and Saturn being there, it's like your relationships with your networks are about a spiritual tests for you. It is about, a, it, it is quite literally a sort of divinely, div divinely designed way that the divine will test you and force you to grow and evolve in terms of the decisions that you make with how you relate. And so I'm getting that these are all of the questions that are kind of up for the Taurus Collective. Um, and, you know, this thing about, you know, you could be making money. And I'm getting that for all of you, wherever you fall on this, whether you are somebody who's co-creating something that's really tapped in with the divine, like some higher mission, you know, one of the spiritual warriors here, whether you, you know, may not quite be there, but you are still like um, growing spiritually and evolving and healing. And, you know, you're committed to um, resolving karmas. And, and maybe one of the ways that you see that is through the sort of material success that you're able to build. It's like for, for all of you, regardless, all of it is making you money. But for some of you, it will also keep you a slave. And that is what Saturn is asking you to question. That is what Saturn is asking you to question. And, um, yeah, and that, that felt heavy. It feels heavy. And it's like, it, it came through, um, just so very clearly. So let's, let's end this by looking at the Oracle cards that we came here and it's, that came out here and it's worth the wait and take your time. And it says, is something or someone not moving forward as fast as you would like? This card is here to reassure you, hold fast, be patient. The best things in life are worth waiting for. And then this card that says, take your time. It says, slow down. If you are feeling under pressure, whether in response to a situation or the demands of another person or from pressure that you are placing on yourself, this card asks you to slow down. And take time to evaluate before reaching a conclusion, making a decision, or committing yourself. Okay, and so that is absolutely in line with all of this energy moving into your 12th house. Um, and Mars moving into your third house. It's like Mars in the third house, you know, can, can create a sort of angst and anxiety to um, to be mixing, <laughs> you know, while you also had, you know, a lot of activity in your 11th house, right? And so it's, it's to just slow down and to really sit with these questions. And I know they're big questions. They hit to the core. That's what the Divine Mother does. That is what Saturn does. And it's just, it's connected to this, this larger transformation. Okay. And that, um, you know, the new moon is going to, is going to, is going to spark, you know, that new moon is also happening in Aries at that critical zero degree and it's making a connection to Pluto. So I definitely uh, suggest looking at the other readings here on the channel, look at that Saturn in Pisces and Pluto and Aquarius video and um, maybe in general just spend some time with some of the content here on this channel as you continue to dive deep to uh, make your mark right and not dim your light right but just I think ask this question of is the divine in the midst of your money moves
Okay, Taurus, the beloved bulls, thank you so much for watching. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. Join us here every day for our daily grace meditations. While you have more um, sort of activity in your 12th house, this could be a good time to just really dig into a daily gratitude practice. And um, that is what our daily grace meditations are designed for. Okay. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope that March is an incredible month. Definitely one where you're encouraged to rest up, to just spend some time nurturing yourself, slowing down, and really just taking beautiful care of yourselves.